and talk about this guy. So this is the Coppice, Copis, Copis mod by eLiquid Lab. Let me get you a link real quick. So this guy is in stock if anyone is interested in picking one of these up. All right, Darth. Have a good night, my friend. All right. Here you go. So it's 18 millimeter, um, which is actually something that I liked about it because I didn't. I, I don't have any other 18 millimeter mods, and uh, and as you can see, the Griffin looks pretty damn nice on here. Uh, and I do love the Griffin, so this gave me an excuse to use the Griffin. The Griffin. Um, which is uh, one of my two favorite drippers. Um, so it's 65 euro. Uh, I just posted the link if you're interested in pick one, picking one of these guys up. Uh, it is made of 304 grade stainless steel with a mirror polish. It's a mechanical mod. Um, it takes a 14500 battery, so keep that in mind. Um, the firing button obviously is lockable. Well, not obviously, but in this case it is lockable. Uh, and the dimensions of the device are, like I said, 18 millimeter, uh, and it is 85 millimeters tall. Uh, the weight without the battery is 78 grams, which is actually very high for a 14500 mod. And that's one thing that I liked about this device. Uh, it is very, very solid. Um, and I do like the contours of it, so we'll do close-up now. Hold on a sec. And kill autofocus, and here we go. So this is what the mod looks like, okay? You have the bottom switch, and it's serialized, as you can see. 28 here. Um, battery vent. You can see the mirror polish there, and you can see the contours of the device. Okay. And then you have the top cap. I'll show you what that looks like underneath. There you have it. I scratched it up a little bit because I tightened my atomizer down too much. Shame on me. Uh, and there is the brass pin in the center there. Okay. Um, the... The brass pin uh, positive connection is... Um, not telescoping, but it is adjustable. Um, it doesn't need to telescope because it has a spring. So let me tell you a little story real quick uh, about the Copus. So the way that the Copus works, it's similar to the cube from Cyan Mods, where the way that it locks is you actually unscrew and screw in the switch. So there's no real way to tell if you've screwed it far enough out to fire it uh, without just kind of growing accustomed to it. Um, I mean, you can just keep unscrewing this thing if you wanted to, and it'll eventually come out, uh, which I, I don't love that. Um, but we'll we'll screw that back in. Uh, as you can see, brass contact there. This is the part that touches the battery, the brass there with that wonky little spring around it. Now, so the story that I want to tell you guys this is not the original spring from the Copus. This is a pretty much identical spring that I created myself uh, by taking an extra spring I had from another mod and modifying it. Uh, this is pretty much exactly what the spring from the Copus looks like. Uh, however, this is, like I said, not the original spring. So one fine day uh, late last week, I had the Copus and the Griffin with me, and I wanted to switch out the batteries because it's 14500 and I drained those things like nothing. Um, and unscrewed it, pulled the battery out, and uh, when I unscrewed the bottom switch, the spring just went flying. Shot out. It actually shot out of my car window. I spent about 10 minutes looking for it. Couldn't find it. Um, had to uh, use it uh, driving home without a spring in it, which was fine. It just rattled like crazy. I uh, was still able to get it to fire. But, uh, yeah, the spring was lost somewhere. Uh, it's somewhere in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So if you find a spring that looks like this, it's probably the spring to my Copus 
somewhere in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So anyway, um, so that happened. I made myself a new spring, like I said. Uh, the spring is, like I said, again, identical. Now, this is my biggest concern with this device. You notice that there's no insulation on the top of that spring. That's how the stock spring is as well. So the part of the spring that's touching the bottom of the battery is not insulated. So if the spring is a little bit off or the spring tightens up on you a little bit or it shifts a little bit and it makes contact with the bottom of the battery, the battery's gonna start, or the mod's gonna start firing and the current will pass through this spring. Now, the spring uh, will probably collapse and stop firing on its own. I do believe it is a hot spring, uh, even though there's not supposed to be current traveling through it. But the fact that the mod maker didn't take the little bit of extra time to even put like electrical tape on the bottom of the spring so that it didn't have that issue uh, concerns me. It is uh, a safety hazard in my opinion. So. Um, just something to keep in mind okay um didn't like that about this mod obviously the finish on the tube is actually quite nice though like i said and uh underneath the top cap here we'll show you what this looks like so it's just that single brass contact that telescopes up to the um the positive uh, or to the to atomizer connection and connects to the positive post on your battery, okay? Um, it doesn't double telescope because it's got the springs to eliminate battery rattle rather than uh, making it more snug. So, uh, or, or making it more snug with a double telescoping pin rather, I should say. So, um, let's see, let me take off autofocus here and we'll talk about this a little bit more. screw it in and here we go like I said you know unscrew it that's far enough to fire if you only unscrew it that much it doesn't fire when we unscrew it that much it's certainly gonna fire um, so let's give it a vape that's good it's hard I need a little more juice in here hold on a sec Um, so yeah, I mean, it looks nice, performs relatively well, uh, hits hard for an 18 or 14,500. You know, I mean, I, I love the Griffin, so that's part of the reason why I'm enjoying the vape on this, but it hits just as hard as any of the, uh, the 18, uh, series battery, you know, quality mods that I have. So there's certainly no issues with voltage loss on it. Yeah. However, um, unless they make a V2 uh, or you're willing to modify the spring to um, eliminate that potential issue with uh, it making contact with the bottom of your battery and firing on its own, uh, I can't recommend this device. Uh, it's just, it's a safety hazard. I mean, it can fire on its own. You've got metal on metal, potentially. Um, and you know, I mean, if you, what if you use a battery that's got different insulation on the, on the bottom, or maybe the insulation wore off on the bottom of the battery, the battery's still fine, but it doesn't have the insulation, um, uh, plastic wrap on the bottom of the battery. The thing's just going to fire on its own. It's going to be making constant contact. So, um, yeah, if you're willing to modify it on your own, like I said, then, you know, I think it's a decent, um, 14,500. Um, if you're looking for something for an 18 millimeter, yeah, but stock absolutely cannot recommend the device. So, um, there you have it. That's the Copus. A little disappointed that they just kind of missed that one feature that's so huge. I mean, just do, all you gotta do, do what the, do what they did with the QZI Megatron switch. And just, I mean, they put a little bit of like insulating tape on the spring so that the part where it touches the battery doesn't have contact with uh or it, it doesn't have exposed metal that's all you got to do but it was it was not to be 
Um, and I also don't really like the switch on it because it's that just kind of screw and unscrew and not really sure you got a long throw on it or a short throw or whatever. But anyway, so there you have it. I, uh, I cannot recommend that device unless you're willing to modify it. So that is the Copus from e-liquid lab.